Have you ever had a frustrating shiny hunt? A hunt that you thought was going to be so easy peasy, but it ended up being over odds. Or the shiny is indistinguishable to its regular form. Enter Poltergeist. Introduced in Gen 9's Scarlet and Violet Teal Mask DLCs, they're located in the Kitakami's bamboo biome. No, it's not original form of Sinistee. As stated in the Violet Pokédex, they're unrelated. What they do share is having two variations, a counterfeit and an authentic slash artisan form. How do you distinguish between those variations? A stamp. A stamp so tiny, so hard to recognize, you can easily miss it if you don't know what you're looking for. Luckily, if you do catch one of these Pokemons, you get a screen that will specify whether it's real or fake. When the reveal trailer for Poltergeist first dropped, I was excited to hunt for this little guy, though I was cautious. Remembering the Sword and Shield days, I've heard stories for hunts for Sinistee, though I was gonna wait till I stumble upon an outbreak of Poltergeists. As the data miners found out later on, since Scarlet and Violet's 2.0.1 update, it fixed an outbreak bug, allowing for both variation Pokemon outbreaks to appear. More on that later. Now, as a shiny hunter myself, I've had my fair share of hard, crazy, and overawed shiny hunts. Yet, none of these pale in comparison to the experience of hunting this tea caddy. I mean, my Gen 2 luck has been insane up to this point, so raw dogging full odds didn't even compare to the experience I had shiny hunting this poltergeist. I mean, hell. Evolving these things requires separate items depending if they're real or fake. It's crazy how specific and detailed you have to be for this Pokemon. This story begins earlier in July of this year. I was actually a shiny hunting Pokemon for a video on Pokemon Sleep when I happened to stumble upon a Poltergeist outbreak. Now, I was managing my expectations because there's a good chance these outbreaks can be straight up counterfeit. However, doing a quick little catch, we found out that yes, this is the Artisan outbreak. As stated earlier, Earlier, thanks to the work of data miners, we found out variation outbreaks for Pokemon were fixed, allowing for artisan poltergeist outbreaks to appear. So weighing the costs and benefits in my head, my inattentive ADHD went into overdrive. I decided to pause the shiny hunts for the Pokemon sleep video until I found an artisan poltergeist. At first, I thought it was going to be a quick one. The Gen 9 games are notorious for being too easy to shiny hunt in. With the shiny charm, your odds are so good and you can go through so many encounters you can easily get your desired Pokemon well within the 30 minutes of that Herba Mystica sandwich shiny boost. And well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case here. I felt like I was soft resetting on the actual shiny Poltergeist, but can you blame me? Have you seen the Poltergeist shiny and non-shiny? They look so alike. The shiny is dark green compared to the black accents on the non-shiny form. So yes, looking at it on Cerebi.net, it's perceived as distinct. However, man, have you seen what it looks like in-game? After watching a few videos to get an idea of what it looks like, I gulped and proceeded with the new mission. Now, to delve into the weeds here, the avid Gen 9 Shiny Hunters discovered a method in Scarlet and Violet to Shiny Hunt. It's called the counting method. To put it simply, there will always be 15 Pokemon in your proximity regardless of an outbreak or not. However, if there's a shiny Pokemon among them, there will be 16. So I decided to combine the picnic reset and counting methods to try and speed up this hunt. And well, that, that didn't help. Not only do these guys like to wander away, well, they like to rest in the evening. So you're on a time limit due to the spawns for the poultry guys only appearing at night. So if you don't have the correct time of day, you can kiss your time and sandwich away as the poultry guys like to rest in the evening. We did get a shiny, but it wasn't our target shiny. It was a shiny Growlithe. This little guy appeared towards the end of the sandwich, so I couldn't just reset on it, and it was in the corner of my eye, so I picked up on it, and well, we, we caught it. Knowing I was pressed on time to hunt my shiny Pokemon from Pokemon Sleep, it took the hunt offline the next day. Thankfully, if you avoid connecting online and revert your switch clock back to the day you encountered the outbreak, you can keep it indefinitely. With these little nitpicks, you can imagine the frustration and errors that arose in this hunt. Oh, did I forget the size? Look how small this little goober is. I told my thumbnail artist to please make them bigger for the sake of the thumbnail. Countless false alarms, the lighting in the game bamboozling me, fear of the little guy just straight up fleeing the scene, or having a reset on them without me knowing, it all drove me up a wall. When I get frustrated like this, 
I like to remind myself why I love shiny hunting Pokemon in the first place. What I love about shiny hunting Pokemon is a term I like to use, the inevitable point. The definition reads, unable to be avoided, evaded, or escaped. It's certain, faded, and inevitable conclusion. You reach the point in your shiny hunt that the odds are in your favor. At a point, you're definitely going to get that shiny Pokemon. If you miss it, well, you're just over odds, and you need to re-roll until you get to that point once again. And to me, that's what makes it all fun. The fact that if you stick with it long enough, you can get a shiny Pokemon through the encounters. Getting under odd shinies, well, that's the icing on the cake. That before you reach the inevitable point, through sheer luck, you got the shiny beating the odds. It's why I love RNG manipulation too. Given the odds in the game, and yet with a few tools and being skillful pressing A at the right frame, you yourself can get a shiny Pokemon. And those odds, well, it depends on a generation. So keeping the inevitable point front and center in my mind, doing my best to use my boomer eyes to try and find the shiny, we accidentally encountered the shiny poltergeist at 378 picnic resets. With around 15 Pokemon per picnic encounter, that's an estimate total of 5,670 poltergeists. And lo and behold, look at that shiny. But I mean, come on now, doesn't that look like it's regular form? I swear that lighting is throwing me off. We saved our game so we can get ready to catch the poultry guys, but knowing how insane this hunt is, I wanted to take it a step further. Yes, I caught it in a beast ball. It took a few tries, but luckily I landed a crit catch. Finally, the shiny tea caddy was finally ours. We finally reached the inevitable point. And yeah, that's the story of one of my most frustrating shiny hunts up to this point. Do you have a shiny hunt equally as frustrating? Was I overreacting? Let me know in the comment section below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all when I see you.